The crowd is quite problematic in the Gospels. There's always a crowd that stops people from getting to Jesus. We see it first when Jesus is at Peter's house and they have that paralytic and the four men are trying to get him to Jesus and they can't because of the crowd. And so they climb on top of the roof, rip a hole in the roof and lower him down to Jesus. And then we have the uh, woman who is the, had the bleed for 12 years and she's hemorrhaging and she's spent everything she had on doctors. She's now poor and she's not getting any better and she just wants to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house to heal his daughter and she has to push and shove her way through the crowd in order to touch the hem of his garment. And then we have yesterday's gospel, Blind Bartimaeus, who was trying to get Jesus' attention and was screaming out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And the crowd was telling him to be quiet. And so today we have the crowd again. Poor little short Zacchaeus can't see Jesus because of the crowd. He can't see over anybody, can't get through, and he wants to see our Lord. And so he climbs the sycamore tree. We have in the first instance a man who is paralyzed to really what he truly needed before even the uh, healing of his paralysis, he needed to be forgiven, right? Because Jesus forgives him before he heals his paralysis. Thanks be to God to his friends. This man had four very good friends who made sure they got him to Jesus. He couldn't get to Jesus on his own. He couldn't walk, couldn't get there, and there's no way they get, he was getting through the crowd. These friends of his were wonderful. They were true friends because their mission was to get him to our Lord. And they broke through the roof and lowered him down to make sure that he got to Jesus. And then this woman, you know, she was so persistent. Thanks be to God, she had enough strength left in her because she was very weak. But she had enough strength to push through that crowd. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to God for poor blind Bartimaeus that he could scream loud enough to be heard. <laughs> he had to scream over that crowd to finally be heard. When everyone's telling him to shut up, he's screaming even louder until finally our Lord says, bring him to me. Then the crowd's like, hey, be happy, Jesus is calling you. Yeah, well, if you guys wouldn't tell me to just be quiet, you would have heard me a long time ago. <laughs> right? But anyway, this, he gets to our Lord. And today, thanks be to God, Zacchaeus uh, had a sycamore tree to climb. <laughs> was able to see our Lord, and our Lord was able to see him. In each of these instances, we have these four people who are all seeking something from our Lord. The first man was seeking forgiveness and was seeking the ability to walk again, the healing of paralysis. This poor woman was seeking to stop bleeding, to be healed of that bleed. The uh, blind Bartimaeus wanted sight, and today, Zacchaeus, he just wanted our Lord. <laughs> I don't think he, I'm not too sure he knew what he wanted. He just wanted to see Jesus. That was it, you know. But he wasn't sure what he wanted here. What he received was far more, perhaps, than he was even bargaining for after he had experienced our Lord. So many of us, you know, we we want to be healed. We want to be able to walk, and I don't mean just physical walking. Uh, with some exceptions excluded. <laughs> We're talking more about the spiritual walking, being able to, to walk the path of the Lord, able to walk the path of righteousness, able to walk the path of holiness, able to walk the difficult road that leads to the glory of the kingdom of heaven. We need God's grace to do that. We can't do it on our own. And we need the Lord's power in our lives, the grace in our lives, to walk the narrow path that leads there. We need His strength so that our legs can actually carry our soul, our spiritual legs that is, to get to the Lord. And so we need His grace. And in order to even start on that road, to get on that road, we need His forgiveness. We need His mercy. We need to be brought into the state of grace. And that gift of the state of grace only happens by the gift of God's pardon and His mercy, either through the waters of baptism or regenerated through the, water, through the gift of the sacrament of confession. Either way, we're not walking the spiritual path unless we receive the state of grace, right? If we're not in the state of grace, we're not walking towards heaven. We're on the wide road that leads to damnation. And so the Lord brings us to mercy, and through the gift of His mercy, He puts us on that path. Now, many of us 
are also bleeding in our hearts. We have these gaping wounds that have been there. Perhaps they're emotional wounds, perhaps psychological wounds, perhaps they are spiritual wounds that don't allow us to get any better. We're still wounded. We need the healing power of our Lord to heal those wounds because we're bleeding. Perhaps we've gone to spiritual directors, we've gone to psychologists or counselors, we've gone to doctors, whatever, and nothing's helping. Because only the grace of God can heal what is broken within us. And we need to be asking the Lord Jesus Christ to heal that within us, to stop this bleeding of our heart, uh, to stop that wound, to heal that wound that is not, um, that time has not healed. Maybe it was betrayal by somebody, and so we can't trust because we've been betrayed. Maybe it's, uh, we, we've been hurt so much in life that we're afraid because we've been hurt, we don't want to trust again, and so forth. There are many things that keep us so wounded that doesn't allow us to get any better. We can't even trust God because we just believe that no one cares enough about us, and so we get stuck. We're not getting any better. Or perhaps it's guilt, that people are uh, uh, bound down by the guilt of things they've done in their lives and how horrible lives they've lived, and they look at their guiltiness and they haven't accepted the mercy of God. And so they, they go into psychologists or counselors to try to deal with the guilt, but the only person who can take that guilt away is the confessional, is the sacrament, is our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can absolve all that guilt and shame and free the person to be able then to uh, truly be alive in Him. And perhaps we're very much like blind Bartimaeus, and we've been blind to the ways of God. We're blind to the things that God wants of us, and we need the Lord to heal us. We need to shout out to the Lord, Lord, heal my blindness, much like St. Augustine did as he was pleading with the Lord to heal his blindness. He said the Lord shined and shattered his darkness. He was truly spiritually blind. He couldn't see the right path. He couldn't see the way to the Lord. He couldn't see our Lord. And um, his blindness was healed. So oftentimes, you know, we could even be walking on the path of the Lord. We say, Lord, I don't know where I'm going in this spiritual journey. I don't know where I'm at, Lord. Please, Lord, heal my sight. And um, we need to cry out over the, uh, the crowd that keeps us in the blindness. We need to truly seek the Lord to see him. And that's truly the gift of faith. But it's also, sight has to do with understanding and knowledge which is why scripture reading is so important, spiritual reading is so important, good, truly holy Catholic books, um, not just any Catholic book, because there's a lot of bad Catholic authors out there who are not Catholic, who teach heresy, um, but we need to find really good, solid Catholic teaching and stick with that. I remember back in the 80s when I discovered Father John Harden's catechism. I drank that thing in, I finally found the truth so beautifully written by Father John Harden um, that it really affected my life deeply. Or discovering the tapes by Fulton Sheen and listening to Fulton Sheen and the truth being taught to me so beautiful. It opened my eyes. I was no longer blind to the truths of the faith. So spiritual reading, scriptural reading, and meditation, very important. And then Zacchaeus today. What's the sycamore tree of our life that we have to climb to see our Lord? Well, it's the spiritual life. Right? It's a hard climb. <laughs> we want to see the Lord face to face. Uh, here's a little uh, Zacchaeus who is a tax collector, a wealthy man. doesn't sound like he's a good man at first, but there's something in him that's driving him to come to see our Lord. And he climbs up that tree, and our Lord invites him. He climbs to see our Lord, and he receives the invitation of our Lord. When we start seeking, we start climbing, perhaps we need to claw our way to the Lord to get through the crowd that's telling us to be quiet, or the crowd that's blocking our way, whether that crowd be our sins, or that the crowd be our, our guilt, or that crowd be our shame, or that crowd is brokenness and hurt in our life, or that crowd can be thoughts that God doesn't care, unreal. We have to climb over all of it to get to our Lord, to receive the invitation from our Lord. Once we receive the invitation from our Lord, we have to decide to welcome Him. Just as Zacchaeus had to decide that, yes, He would welcome our Lord into the house. We have to welcome our Lord to the house of our hearts, welcome Him in. And once He's there, there needs to be a response. You know, as I'm thinking of Zacchaeus today, who was like, I'm going to give half of everything to the poor. I think of Mary and Martha. Right? So what did Mary do? Mary, after Jesus uh, healed her brother, 
uh, where raised him from the dead. You know, what was her response? She took a whole, you know, year's worth of, of, uh, of, um, of, of salary of this perfume and she pours it over our Lord's head. She just dumps it out over him. Like she just, you know, anoints him with this beautiful perfumed oil, dumps it out, this year's worth of oil. And poor Judas didn't think our Lord was worth it and said, what a waste, right? <laughs> so, but she dumps it out over his head. Today Zacchaeus is doing the same thing. He's dumping out his wealth. He's giving half of everything to the poor, and if he's defrauded anybody, if he's defrauded everybody, you're a tax collector. Of course you defrauded people. <laughs> he's going to pay them back. Uh, how beautiful. There's that response of generosity. That when we climb that tree, and we see our Lord, we get over that crowd of our life, and the, we welcome the Lord in, there needs to be the response of generosity. As you mentioned yesterday, no longer 10%. But the all. So today I ask us to think about and reflect upon what's the crowd in our lives, what's keeping us from getting to our Lord. First of all, we should ask, what do I need from the Lord? You know, uh, do I need a deeper healing so I can walk more firmly along the path of the Lord? Are there things I still need forgiveness for in my life? Do I need to accept the forgiveness of the Lord in my life? What in my heart is an open wound that's still there that hasn't been healed? that's not allowing me to move forward with the Lord? Uh, what is there in my life that is still keeping me blind? Do I need to know the Lord better? Deep, do I need to re-engage spiritual reading? Do I need to re-engage in more meditative prayer to truly see Him and who He really is? And uh, what tree do I need to climb <laughs> to get to Him, right? Uh, what, the, what crowd do I have to get over? And have I truly welcomed Him in my life? And have I truly responded with the generosity that the Lord wants of me in response to his kindness, his goodness, his healing, his love, his mercy, uh, his generosity? What's my response to the generosity of God? May God bless you. And Mary keep you.